Okay, I see we're alive. Sergeants, will you begin your recordings? PC recording is underway. Cloud recording is up. Backup has started. Thank you, Sergeant Leonardo. You may begin the opening. Good morning, and welcome to today's New York City Remote Council hearing for the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. At this time, we ask that all council members and council staff please turn on their video for verification purposes. To minimize disruptions, please place all cell phones and electronic devices to silent or vibrate. If you have testimony you'd wish to submit for the record, you may do so via email by sending it to testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that is testimony at council.nyc.gov. Mr. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you, uh, and good morning. I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I am joined remotely today by Council Members Levin, Ayala, Rivera, Felice, and Lander. Uh, today we will hold public hearings on two Brooklyn rezoning proposals for 909 Castle Hill Avenue and 361 City Island Avenue. I will also note that LU 792 for the West 16th Street item is being laid over. But first, uh, we will vote on a number of items heard by the subcommittee at our May 4th meeting. We will vote to approve pre-considered LUs 777 and 778 for the Arthur Avenue rezoning relating to property in Council Member Felice's district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment, including changing R6 and R6 C24 districts to a C61 district and mapping a C14 overlay within an existing R6 district to facilitate the development of a new mixed use and residential development site, including approximately 146 hotel rooms, 56 dwelling units, 17, which would be permanently affordable, and 156 below grade parking spaces. Council Member Felice is in support of the proposal. We will also vote to approve pre considered LU 779 and 780 for the Acme Fish rezoning relating to property in Council Member Levin's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment and a zoning special permit, changing an M31 district to an M15 district to facilitate the development of a mixed use industrial commercial development, including a new industrial facility for Acme Smoke Fish and a commercial office building with ground floor retail. Council Member Levin is in support of the proposal. We will also vote to approve LUs 781 and 782 for the 261 Walton Avenue rezoning related, relating to property in Council Member Ayala's district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning uh, map and zoning text amendment to change the existing M14 R6A district to an R8A C2 for district within the MX-13 Special Mixed Use District and to eliminate a portion of the existing MX-13 district and related and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing utilizing option one. Council Member Ayala is in support of the proposal. We will also vote to approve LU-783 for the 606 Neptune Avenue rezoning in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change a C21, a C1 2 overlay to a C24 overlay within the existing R6 district to facilitate the legalization of an existing drive through facility, which is accessory to a uh, use group six eating and drinking establishment. We will also vote to approve LU 784 and for the 300 uh, for the 300 Huntington Street rezoning relating to property in Council Member Landers District in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing M21 district to an M23 district to facilitate the development of a new manufacturing and commercial office building along with approximately 7,500 square foot waterfront public access area. Council Member Lander is in support of the proposal. We will vote to approve with modifications LU 785 and 786 for the 30-02 uh, Newtown Avenue rezoning in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment, a zoning map and zoning text amendment to change an existing C44A district to a C44D uh, district and to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one or option two. Our modification will be to remove MIH option two while retaining option one. Um, I now want to uh, take this opportunity to uh, turn it over to uh, 
any of the council members uh, who would like to speak on uh, their rezonings. Council Member Lander, I see your hand up. Thank you very much, Chair Moy. I appreciate the opportunity to join you here. Uh, oh, so I don't know. Uh, Council Member Felice got his his Zoom hand raised faster than right. mine, so I don't know. I'm happy to defer on Zoom hand raise to our new colleague. Okay. So yeah, Council Member Felice, you go first, and I'll I'll go after you. I'll lower my hand just for you. No, go <laughs> ahead. Please, Brad, please go ahead. Brad, just go ahead. Oh, just all right. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I appreciate the committee's uh, voting today on the project at 300 Huntington Street in the Gowanus IBZ and appreciate your hearing it uh, recently. Um, I'm in full support of this project, especially with some uh, an agreement that Monadnock Construction has, has agreed to with South Brooklyn Industrial Development Corporation this morning. Um, Monadnock is a wonderful Brooklyn-based construction company. They've been in uh, the Gowanus area for 45 years doing a range of mixed income and affordable housing, really great local company. Um, the site that their offices currently are located in is in the Gowanus rezoning and would become possible to be uh, an MIH project. Uh, but they want to stay in Gowanus. And so they have identified and purchased a property just a few blocks away within the IBZ at 300 Huntington Street. Um, but in order for it to work for them to build a new uh, construction offices, construction lot, manufacturing and office building, uh, they need this change from M21 to M23 to eliminate the parking requirement. That's going to allow them to build a 100,000 square foot building, which will house their offices, uh, their construction uh, company and lot, um, as well as other light manufacturing and office spaces generate 715 permanent jobs, transit accessible in the industrial business zone. Um, they're building a shore public walkway, which will actually be one of the first pieces of public access to the Gowanus Canal. And it's a great model of how that can be done affordably in the industrial business zone with no new residential development. Um, lots of other good features, green roof and integrated vegetation. The thing that they've now agreed to with the South Brooklyn Industrial Development Corporation, I think is a real good model for development in our IBZs. They are committing that of the 100,000 square foot in total, which would have the broader set of M zone uses, um, at least 10,000 square feet will always stay for genuinely uh, light manufacturing and light industrial uses. And of that 10,000 square feet in the near term, they're making available 5,000 of it that South Brooklyn Industrial Development Corporation will be able to rent out at below market rents. So the genuine manufacturing and light industrial uses of the kind that have been in Gowanus for many years, but have been pushed out by rising rents, even within the IBZ, will still be able to be there. And uh, that agreement lasts for 16 years. And then in perpetuity, they're committing that 10,000 square feet of the building will be a narrower mix of what we're calling the Gowanus mix of genuinely light industrial or manufacturing uh, uses and not the broader set of uses you can do in an IBC that include office and some retail and in many cases are displacing manufacturing uses. So it's not quite like, but it's a little bit like, uh, I don't want to maybe call it this, but it's almost MIH for manufacturing mandatory a, a commitment they are making to preserve genuinely manufacturing uses which is going to be critical in our ibz's in the years to come so i'm grateful to them for this project for agreeing to these additional commitments um and i think this could be a model for the city for years to come and i, I support the project and i i hope you will vote yes on it thank you thank you councilmember lander uh, i now want to turn it over to councilmember felice thank you chair moya uh, today, I'm proud to announce that I'm uh, supporting the rezoning application and voting yes. Uh, these applications would facilitate the development of a 13-story hotel, as well as a residential development in the Arthur Avenue or Little Italy area in the 15th Council District that I'm so proud to represent. Uh, Little Italy is home to the best restaurants in the city of New York. It's also the neighbor of the greatest attractions in our city, including the Bronx Zoo, and also the Bronx Botanical Garden, institutions that are heavily visited by individuals from everywhere in the world. However, Little Italy is an area underserved by hotels and by building a hotel will create the opportunity of ensuring that individuals that visit, uh, local tourists uh, not only visit our neighborhood, but can also stay in our neighborhood. And the more people stay, uh, the more business can be done and the more economic activity in the area, the more people in that area can be employed. Uh, this is a project that is strongly supported by the community, including the local community board, also local businesses, 
and also local residents, many who are employed by the local businesses. Uh, I think this is a very good project for Arthur Avenue and for the 15th Council District. Uh, and I thank the applicants for all the good work they do in the Bronx. And I'm in full support of the project and I'm, I'll be voting yes today. Uh, thank you, Council Member Felice. Um, before I turn it over to Council Member Levin for some remarks, I just want to acknowledge that we've been joined by uh, Council Members uh, Borelli and uh, Council Member Grudencek. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. And uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Council Member Hi, so, yeah, hi uh, thank you, you Chair. I'm sorry, I'm double, double zooming right now. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, briefly um, speak about um, the um uh rezoning in, in my district um with regard to ashme acne sorry acne fish um uh this is a um an application um uh joint with, between um acne fish and um and rubenstein partners to do a um within the ibz in in uh greenpoint williamsburg a um uh, a, a new home for um, acne fish in, in addition to um, a commercial development. Um, uh, we have come to an agreement on um, ensuring that um, the uh, space that was determined to be uh, light manufacturing that will be the home for acne, um, which is a local family owned um, uh, producer. Many of you know, you see there um products in in uh, grocery stores it's all the smoked fish that blue hill bay and acme and and um all produced in in north brooklyn um uh that square footage um that is dedicated to that new home will be maintained uh through an agreement with evergreen as a uh, light manufacturing space even if the property is sold through a restrictive deck on the on the on the deed recorded against the deed as well as an agreement with evergreen which is the um north brooklyn um ibz um, administrator so um uh i just want to thank uh, all the community members that um that uh that uh spoke about this project and um and the applicant and um uh, uh rubenstein and their um uh, their team um, and um, and Acme for uh, for for uh, uh, making a commitment to stay in this neighborhood uh, for the long term. Um, it's easy enough to pack up and move to um, a a different state with uh, you know lower taxes and easier access and um, close to a interstate and all all of the above. But um, uh, they have, um, you know, with this established that their future is here in Brooklyn, and and the workforce that, um, you know, the 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 dozens and dozens of of longtime uh, uh, workers and skilled workers that they have at Acme, it's uh, it's it's refreshing to see um, a uh, long term manufacturer in our city, um, uh, you know make a bet on on the future of this city and it's and it's um and it's light manufacturing so with that i'll turn it back to the chairman thank you thank you council member levin um uh, okay and uh, now uh, i will move to call for a vote to approve lu's uh, 777 through 784 and to approve with modifications i have described lu's 785 and 786 uh, council, Chair Moya. I am all. <clears throat> Council Member Levin. I vote aye. Council Member Gordenchik. Aye. Council Member Ayala. I vote aye. Council Member Rivera. I vote aye. Council Member Borelli. I vote aye. Thank you. Okay, Chair, we currently have uh, the land use items at a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. We will uh, keep the vote open.
uh, for uh, through the meeting. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Arthur. Uh, but before uh, we turn uh, our hearing uh, to our hearings, I first want to recognize uh, the subcommittee council to review uh, the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearings. If you wish to testify and have not already registered, we ask that you please do so now by visiting the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc.gov uh, www to sign up. Members of the public may also view a live stream broadcast of this meeting at the Council's website. As a technical note, for the benefit of the, of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of any of the presentations shown today, please send an email request to testimony at council.nyc.gov. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted until recognized by the chair to speak. Applicant teams will be recognized as a, as a group and called first, followed by members of the public. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that your microphone is on before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written to, or uh, if you have written testimony to submit instead of appearing here before the subcommittee, you may email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of your participant panel or at the bottom of your primary viewing window. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands and Chair Moya will recognize members to speak. Witnesses are requested to remain in the meeting until excused by the chair as council members may have questions. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this meeting for various technical reasons. And we ask that you please be patient as we work through any issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda items. Uh, thank you, Arthur. Um, I will now open the public hearing on LU's uh, 790 and 791 uh, for the 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning proposal re requesting a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment relating to property in Council Member Diaz Sr.'s in the Bronx. I will uh, remind the viewing public for anyone wishing to testify on this item, if you've not already done so, you may you, you must register online in advance, and you may do that now uh, by visiting the council's website. Uh, council, if you could please call uh, the first panel on this item. The applicant panel includes Richard Lobel and Amanda Iannati, land use counsel for the applicants, and Veronica Blanco and Willie Jabuk. Uh, panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak. Okay. Now, panelists, if you would please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee uh, and in answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are in receipt of your slideshow presentation for this proposal. When you are ready to present it, please say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both initial loading and the advancing of slides. As a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. And now if the panelists would please restate your name and organization for the record, you may begin. Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel PC for the applicant. Manza Iannotti of Sheldon Lobel PC. Veronica Blanco of Blanco Designing as part of the applicant. Wally Jalbuch, Associate Broker with Marcus and Melichap on behalf of the applicant. Thank you. You may begin. Uh, Chair, Council members, good morning. If you can please put up the presentation, we'll quickly roll through the slides. So we're here this morning for the 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning. This is a rezoning which has found support at Bronx Community Board 9, the Bronx Borough President's Office and City Planning. We're hoping we gain the council's support today. Um, the project summary consists of two main points. 
you can go to the second slide. The first is a zoning map amendment to rezone the property at 909-921 Castle Hill Avenue, along with five other lots on this frontage from an R32 district to an R6B, C13, and R6B zoning district. This would facilitate the development of a mixed use five-story cellar uh, plus cellar residential, commercial, and community facility building. The total floor area of the building would amount to roughly 41,000 square feet with a total of 35 dwelling units of which nine would be mandatory inclusionary housing. Uh, the second, of course, is to map the uh, inclusionary housing, mandatory inclusionary housing district on the site, um, permitting both option one and option two. So that was the project summary, which is slide number two. Um, if you want to advance to slide three, I'm not sure who's controlling. Here we go. That's fine. Thank you. So this is just a summary of the um, proposed zoning calculations and rent calculations at the site. This would be a five-story building with a base height of 30 feet and a total height of 50 feet. It would have setbacks on Castle Hill and Story Avenues. The floor area, as stated, would be roughly 41,000 square feet. There would be an excess of parking and 22 parking spaces in the cellar, along with 44 bike parking spaces. Uh, the unit breakdown, as stated, is two studios, 18 one-bedrooms, 11 two-bedrooms, and four three-bedrooms. Uh, mandatory inclusionary units would be included, and a rough schedule of rents is listed at the bottom. Next slide. So this property is located currently within R32 along Castle Hill Avenue uh, and has remained R32 uh, since 1961. Next slide. As you can see from the zoning map presented, the proposed change would involve an 80 foot commercial overlay uh, along uh, Castle Hill Avenue, along with an underlying R6B that would be mapped to 80 feet uh, along the entirety of Castle Hill Avenue with the exception of 180 feet uh, to encompass the entirety of the property along Story Avenue. Next slide. This really demonstrates why the rezoning is particularly appropriate here. So importantly, you can see that there are six lots included in the rezoning within the dotted area, five to the north of the property. All five of those prop properties are currently uh, at floor area ratios of greater than 2.2 as would be permitted under the R6B. They're all at 2.84 to 2.86 and all have ground floor commercial uses. So all of them are currently non-conforming with regards to use and non-complying with regards to bulk. After the proposed rezoning, they will all be conforming. They will have conforming commercial use with residential above. And although they will not be entirely complying, they will be closer to be complying for the FAR currently is at a 0.5 for residential uses, while the 2.2 is more appropriate for these overbuilt buildings. Uh, if you wanna page through the next three slides, you'll see photos of the surrounding area. Uh, these demonstrate both the fact that we have a vacant lot here, uh, as well as the commercial, uh, current commercial use, both on our property and, our pro and the properties to the north. As you go towards the Bruckner Boulevard, this is uh, of course a wide street along Castle Hill Avenue, particularly appropriate for the rezoning, uh, and two blocks south of Bruckner, the Bruckner, which allows for a range of transportation options. So with that, I would just um, end this portion of the presentation on the first plan sheet, which is, um, you'll see the next slide, which has the calculations with regards to the proposal. This is of course a five-story building uh, with roughly 35,000 square feet of residential floor area, 3,000 square feet plus or minus of commercial floor area and 2,700 square feet of community facility floor area located on the ground floor. Um, I have the entire applicant team here for questions. I would merely note at this point that, uh, as I said, we've, we've achieved tremendous success with this application so far in terms of public support. Community Board 9 had a list of recommendations which the applicant has accepted, uh, which uh, for purposes of the council, we'll just say includes um, inclusion of the United Hispanic Construction Workers and or Building Skills New York to uh, facilitate construction and ensure that 25% of the workforces for these developments are residents of the community board zip codes. Uh, community space will be set aside for programming that will be uh, at no cost for the first year and $15 per square foot moving forward. And there will be other um, community uh, benefits accruing here, including contribution yearly to a neighborhood school, sponsorship of a local park, 
uh, and other initiatives, which um, the uh, the applicant here has agreed to. Uh, we're really thrilled with the uh, with the community support to date, and we're happy to answer any questions of the council. Great, thank you, Richard. Uh, just sticking with the community uh, side of things here. Uh, have you identified uh, tenants or do you have uh, any preferred categories of tenants to occupy the ground floor retail or community facility space? Yeah, my understanding from the last conversations was that um, this was going to be local retail. I would I would defer to Willie, who's on the phone uh, as a representative to see whether or not there's been anything more specific regarding the tenants. No, there's nothing specific at this point, but we are very much looking forward to have a local retail um, in there. We have pretty much in talks with uh, daycare facilities in the area who are very happy to occupy such space for the community facility. Okay, great. Um, also, uh, has a general contractor been selected for this project? Uh, I don't think so. I know that the uh, community board recommendations have us including uh, local residents within the workforce. I don't know whether or not, uh, for purposes of Willie or Veronica, whether or not um, a GC has been selected to date. It has not been selected yet. Okay. Uh, could you discuss efforts to uh, hire locally on construction on this project? And similarly, uh, what are the efforts uh, that will be made to hire MWBE firms? So um, the applicant here, and and this application actually has been before the community board now for well over a year and a half. There was a prior iteration. There was a modification to the bulk of the application. So we vetted these issues with the community board and, and accepted the following two conditions. The first being that uh, with specificity to collaborate with the independent nonprofit United Hispanic Construction Workers and or Building Skills New York City to facilitate and ensure that up to 25% of the construction workforces for these developments are residents in our community board zip codes and or the Bronx, zip codes 10, 473, 472, 462, and 460. So that commitment is to allow for at a minimum 25% uh, or up to 25% would be um, of these local uh, of local workers. Um, the second would be that um, the, the developer, and I know Willie and the developer have talked about this many times, um, we'll work with the Minority and Women Contractors and Developers Association to facilitate opportunities for certified MWBE contractors for this development. Uh, I know Veronica, who's on the phone with us and the project architect uh, herself is an MWBE. And so um, we're confident here that uh, we'll be able to meet the criteria set forth by the community board. Yeah, the, the, the architectural team, Blanco Design, that is a, a women and minority business. Uh, enterprise. So we have been involved from day one. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, that was it for me. Uh, I now want to invite any one of my colleagues uh, who may have any questions for this panel uh, to raise your hand. I see Council Member Ayala. Hi, good, good morning, everyone. I just wanted to get some clarity. I don't know that, that, I, that I heard this correctly. Um, is this MIH option one or two? It's MIH option one. Option one, okay. All right, thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, Arthur, do we have any other members who wish to ask any questions to the panel? Uh, no, sure, I see no members with questions for the panel. Actually, I have a follow up. Sorry. I'm looking at it. I'm trying to catch up with this. Um, so, why did you choose option one as opposed to option two? Well, the discussions around affordability have been, um, we've engaged with the community board for you know well over a year and a half on this. And the rents that are being charged for the affordable units here are actually quite similar to the rents that are being charged for the market rate. Um, in the schedule provided to the community board and with the materials, um, affordable units that are studios here would be $909 and the market rate would be $950 and up, up the chain through um, $1,143 for one bedroom and $1,250 for market rate. So the, for our purposes, option one was close enough to what we're actually charging for the market rate that it just made sense to use option one. Option two in certain instances would have exceeded that. 
Um, so the, the applicant was comfortable here. The community board asked for it and we're happy to acquiesce. Okay, I mean, I my preference is usually, you know, especially considering development in the Bronx where we have um, such high density of, you know, uh, communities where people are living below the poverty line um, that we utilize option two wherever possible, whatever the community board and the community is supportive of the project. You know, I, I mean, you can't argue against that. However, you know, I, my, you know, my preference is always that we try to, we try to, you know, steer towards, I don't, I really don't like MH. I don't think that it, that it offers enough to communities like mine. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a tool that exists. And I think that when possible, um, you know, if we can get to the 40% where it makes sense for that, that community that we should do that. So I just, you know, wanted to go on record saying sure. that. Council member, just to clarify for the record, this, this option, the option one that we're using does allow for 10% of the units at 40% uh, average AMI. So this is the one that goes deeper. Um, and, uh, and and Council Member Diaz was supportive of that and the community board was encouraging. So that's the one we picked. Okay, thank you. You bet. Okay. Um, council, is there uh, any other council members that have any questions for this panel? Uh, no, Chair, I see no other members with questions for this panel. Okay, uh, there being no further questions, uh, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning application? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify for the 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning proposal uh, under LU 790 and 791, please press the raise hand button now. Chair, the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for any members of the public who may have newly registered. Chair Moya, I see no uh, members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you. Uh, there being no members of the public who wish to testify on LU numbers 790 and 791 for the 909 Castle Hill Avenue rezoning proposal, the public hearing is now closed and the items are laid over. Uh, at this point, before we move on to the next uh, hearing, I just want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Member Reynoso, and I'd like to turn it over to uh, our Council for uh, the vote. Uh, on a continuing vote of the land use items, Council Member Reynoso. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and would I? Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, by a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the items are approved and recommended to the full land use committee. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, Okay, I now open the public hearing on the pre-considered LU uh, under ULIP number C210149 ZMX for the 361 City Island Avenue rezoning proposal seeking a zoning map amendment relating to property in Council Member Jonai's district in the Bronx. Uh, once again, if you wish to testify in this meeting, please visit the Council's website now to complete the online registration process, or you may submit written testimony to land use testimony at Council dot nyc dot gov uh council if you could please call the first panel for this item the applicant panel includes frank st jacques land use council for the applicant mr st jacques if you have not already done so please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak mr st jacques please raise your right hand 
Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? I do. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, council. Um, we have re we have received your presentation for this proposal. Uh, when you are ready uh, for it to be shown, please say so, and it will be displayed on screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced. When you say next, please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides. As a reminder for anyone who requires an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to testimony at council.nyc.gov. Uh, and now if the panelists would uh, please restate your name and organization for the record, you may begin. Thank you, Chair uh, Moya and, and subcommittee members. Uh, my name is Frank St. Jacques. I'm with Ackerman LLP. Uh, we are Land Use Council for the project. Um, I am ready to start my presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, uh, I'll just note at the outset, um, the applicant uh, for the 361 City Island Avenue rezoning is uh, the Crab Shanty Restaurant. It's a small business on City Island located in Bronx Community District 10. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm here to present an application for a zoning map amendment to establish a C12 commercial overlay within an existing R3A zoning district on the northwest corner of the intersection of City Island Avenue and Tier Street uh, within uh, Bronx Community District 10. The proposed zoning map amendment will bring historically non-conforming commercial uses, including the Crab Shanty Restaurant and the adjacent commercial parking lot into conformance with the use provisions of the zoning resolution. Next slide, please. The site is shown here on an aerial view of City Island and on the zoning map. Um, it's, um, it was included in the uh, 2003 uh, uh, amendments to the special City Island district as shown on the zoning map. Uh, next slide, please. And sorry, if it, oh, there, thank you. Um, as you can see on this land use map, uh, mixed use and commercial buildings are, are located along City Island Avenue, which is both the main corridor through, uh, which is the main corridor through City Island and where commercial uses are located, uh, both in, in areas where there are commercial overlays and in parts of the avenue, uh, um, like where the site is, uh, that do not have overlays. There's a concentration of commercial uses along City Island Avenue. In the village core area of City Island, um, that's essentially a, a, a starting a block north of the site uh, from Bay Street stretching southward to Carroll Street. Um, and you can see that uh, towards the bottom of the screen, uh, starting at Bay Street, there are several uh, existing C12 commercial overlays mapped. Um, you'll note on, on this map and several of the others, uh, there's sort of a, a gray tint, uh, which reflects that the City Island Special District, excuse me, the Special City Island District is, is mapped over the entirety of the island, which um, comes with special uh, use and bulk provisions for all um, uh, buildings on, on City Island. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this tax map shows the tax lots affected by the proposed rezoning. Uh, it has 100 feet of frontage on City Island Avenue and 120 feet of frontage on Tier Street and measures approximately 12,000 square feet. It's, it's the area that's uh, outlined in red and shaded. Next slide, please. And in this aerial view, you can see the Crab Shanty restaurant located at the corner of Tier and City Island Avenue, as well as the adjacent surface parking lot. Next slide, please. So 361 City Island Avenue was initially occupied by a silent movie theater, then by a post office, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen from the 1940s tax photo. Uh, the Crab Shanty Restaurant was established back in 1977 and has occupied the building since that time. Uh, the adjacent surface parking lot has been in operation since at least the 1970s and, and possibly uh, even longer. Uh, next slide, please. So you can see the, the site, um, the Crab Shanty uh, in these photographs, you're, you're looking Northwest and West from City Island Avenue. 
Uh, it's a um, well-known local business um, that uh, has, has, has operated successfully uh, for about 40 years on City Island. Next slide, please. Uh, this is my final slide. Um, the proposed commercial overlay will allow the crab shanty and the adjacent parking lot to continue to operate as they have for the past several decades. Um, the community, the crab shanty restaurant, um, as I mentioned, has served the community for over 40 years and contributes to the unique character of City Island. Uh, the parking lot allows the restaurant to facilitate customer parking demand on site and minimize impact on local street parking resources. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just got one quick question here. Uh, could you clarify the implications of this proposal on uh, the area uh, that is currently the crab shanty that is uh, being used for parking? Uh, yes. So, so essentially, um, what what that would do is um, legalize the the parking use, um, which is um, is is not a permitted use without the commercial overlay. Okay. And wait, so the current parking operation or arrangements, uh, will there will there be a change? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, no, no change. Essentially, what, what this application strives to do is maintain the status quo of both the restaurant and uh, the parking lot, which, which serves the restaurant, um, and essentially allow them to operate in a legal manner um, moving forward. Well, that's all the questions I have on the crab shanty. Uh, so if there is any other uh, members uh, of the committee that may have any questions uh, regarding the crab shanty, uh, council, if you could please uh, let us know. Uh, no, Chair, I see no members with questions for this panel. Okay. Uh, there being no further questions, uh, the uh, panel is excused. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 361 City Island Avenue proposal? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the 361 City Island Avenue crab shanty proposal, please press the raise hand button now. Chair, the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for any members of the public who may have registered. Chair Moya, I see no uh, other members, no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you. There being no members of the public who wish to testify on the pre-considered LU under ULIP number C210149 ZMX for the 361 City Island Avenue proposal, the public hearing is now closed and the item is laid over. Uh, that concludes today's business. I will remind the viewing public that for anyone wishing to submit written testimony for items that were heard today, please send it by email to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Uh, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, uh, land use and other uh, council staff and the Sergeant at Arms for participating in today's meeting. Uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned.